Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. I'm Ken Burness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa out at the North Shore. And today we're returning to that special series that we've got on big questions. Uh, and today I've got three special guests that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Uh, we're going to talk again about what is important. Very difficult and a hard question for us to not only answer for ourselves, but answer and uh, share with other people. Uh, it gives us direction, and that's what we need to find happiness. But it also makes us uncomfortable, uh, because when we ask ourselves what is important, uh, we may not be acting in line with what we feel is important, and that makes us feel uncomfortable. It also brings up the uncertainty of what might be in the future, because everything changes for us over time, including what is important. So what is important to us 10 years ago or 20 years ago may not be important to us today. So we constantly really need to update ourselves. And that's something that we don't tend to do. Uh, like I said, it tends to make us uncomfortable and we like to keep things short and breezy, sort of like with our social conversations with a lot of people. So uh, with that difficult question that I'm gonna pose, now let me introduce uh, my three good friends, uh, Richard McPherson, Stephen Katz, and Bob Brown. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey. Thank you very much. Hey. Aloha. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> and two months ago, I had uh, three guests who were ladies. And uh, they were like the three guests I have today, very talented and knowledgeable. And uh, so today, I wanted to go back to that same question except this time have my three male friends here. And to be honest with you, I'm not expecting much difference because our gender differences over the past umpteen years, and I'm so old, I can look back over a long time. We've made a lot of progress here. And uh, so I think we've the gender differences uh, have gotten less, but you never know. And so today we're gonna find out. And uh, of course, there are a lot of other individual things that are working here too. <laughs> so I think you're gonna enjoy these answers. Today, I've started, uh, I've asked Steve to start off with uh, everything. So Steve, I'm gonna turn what is important over to you. Okay, um, you know, you gave us this topic, I don't know, a month ago or so, and I've procrastinated dealing with it until <laughs> recently, of course. Um, and I've used uh, my job as a therapist uh, selfishly and unselfishly, because it's a great question to ask people when they come in for therapy. Like, it's another way of asking somebody what their goals are, right? Like, if I was successful as a therapist, what would be different? Sort of like, Ken, you know, the miracle question, you know, if a miracle happened and you didn't have a problem anymore, how would you know it? What would be different? And But with a different twist, like what's important and then, of course, this past week, what's come up, because we live in Hawaii, is what happened in Lahaina. And the people there are dealing with that question in a very existential way. I mean, you know that old question, if your house is on fire, what do you grab? You just have seconds to look around the house. And I think it just sort of confirmed what all the people that I asked and myself, because I wrote my own little spiel before I asked them. And pretty much everybody said the same thing as number one, and it was their relationships to other people. So if your house is on fire, the first thing you look around, you say, is there anybody else in my house that I have to save? You know, and then who do I call? Most of the people, I think all of the people that uh, I asked, said it's about their relationships to other people. It's about feeling connected to other people. Um, one or two, like some of my people in recovery, put that as number one. Like perhaps like one guy I just spoke to today said, um, it's my sobriety and God and my family. Number one, my wife and children. And that's what's important to them. 
Although I did have an outlier, sort of, who it was very interesting. Uh, at first, she said something similar to that. But then she said, you know, here in Hawaii, money is very important to me because this is a very hard place to live. And it's really hard if you, like, she was suffering because although she's, you know, uh, a 50-something-year adult woman, she can't afford her own place to live. And she said now she's in the dating scene again. She feels very crass. But if somebody doesn't make enough money, she's not interested. Because that's important, you know, and maybe it has something to do with the Maslow hierarchy of needs, right? You yeah. need your the basic foundations. You need your enough, a place to live and uh, food, sustenance, and a sense of safety. Those come first. But I pretty much agreed. Uh, once those things are covered, um, it's to me, it's about feeling connected and it's about having a sense of purpose in your life is right up there for me, uh, a reason to get up in the morning. And for me, that's about helping others. Okay, over to Bob. Bob, you're up. <laughs> All right. Well, I, like Steve, I had a lot of thoughts about um, what's important to me. And I, what, uh, I came up with, you know, there's uh, three uh, categories of areas that are important to me. Um, <clears throat> one is uh, obviously relationships and learning how to... Uh, maintain those relationships, which um, was a, it's been a struggle for me over the years, learning to maintain them, uh, learning how to make friends, especially uh, as uh, time goes by and, uh, and you uh, are getting up in years and learning, trying to learn how to um, make friends um, as an adult and, uh, uh, and then, you know, maintain the ongoing ones. Also, uh, adjusting the circumstances over time, health, uh, maintaining a sense of being grateful for me, and uh, uh, also um, having a purpose, learning. So, you know, as we, uh, for me, I'm, you know, I'm 76 years old. So as you age, all these, uh, what's important, changes. Uh, right now, time is important. Yeah, you have a lot less time than I did uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And uh, so it, it's about uh, choosing things and and, uh, and stepping in that kind of right direction. Uh, one little of my little cliches that I always uh, talk about in um, with people is uh, I have a learn, learning, I'm learning how to... Um, make friends with unstructured time. <clears throat> you know, I, I grew up in a structured environment, school, work, that kind of thing, military. And um, now I, I retired, but I made a, ch a choice that I wasn't going to, I was going to only create what was good for me. So nothing gets created unless I, Create it. I don't have anything that um, that ha I have to do, and um, then there I have uh, these choices to make, and that uh, really brings out what's important to you. And um, and I'm always, I'm learning how what's important to me, and um, some of the things that are important to me I'm I'm getting better at, and some I really need to work on. You know? and um, so I'm going to stop there. There's a, you can, this is an endless subject, and it's always changing. Absolutely. <laughs> Great points, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Richard, over to you. <clears throat> uh, learn your lines. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Steve knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Me too. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I say that because uh, I've come to this realization that I want to feel like I'm a professional, that I'm doing something that when I look at somebody do a, a, a job well, I, I appreciate it. And so I see that when I do theater, I at least have the sense that I am doing 
everything that I can possibly do to create something. And I feel in complete control of it. And I get tremendous satisfaction out of it. And, and you know, I'm here in Hollywood pretending to be an actor. And so I got this chance with Steve to come back to Hawaii and, and, and we, we did everything. We created this all on our own. We got a theater, we produced it. And, and I, I know we both had this tremendous sense of satisfaction that, you know, one, we still could remember things <laughs> and that we helped each other. So that, that to me was extremely important for my well-being, you know, because I thought, no, I'm, I'm still capable. And I thought, you know, there's this whole question about being retired. And I, I don't know that I really could get my head around that. But, you know, you want to stay in the game, you want to be uh, alive, you want to be a uh, matter. Um, and I, I really want to talk about literature because I was an English teacher, but there's these key books along the way that just help shape me and who I am. And the first book I wanted to mention was uh, a book called How to Survive in Your Native Land, which was written by a teacher a fourth grade teacher. And after I read that book, I realized, well, I could be a teacher because I saw myself in the way he created this world that I didn't really understand. But he made it so interesting that I thought, oh, okay. I, that's a profession I think I could do. And thank goodness I did it. And then the other book that I want to mention is Slaughterhouse-Five because Vonnegut really gave me the lowdown on war. And so when I was like 18, 19, I had to really go and think about what I was being asked to do. And I thought for him to describe the horror and what he went through and, and somehow get close to this just unimaginable, absurd thing that, you know, he was going through and that, you know, I thought, oh, I'm going to I'm going to have to deal with this. But it helped sharpen my mind and think, OK, I can make a choice here. You know, it's my life and whether I. I want to engage in all this. And, uh, you know, I love humor. I think humor is just so important. Uh, so I always like to quote Mark Twain because uh, he said, uh, I tried religion, but I didn't take to it. So, uh, you know, that really helped me because, you know, I was, I was brought up in a, such a strict way as a Catholic and it was all, you know, black and white. And I was always going to confession and I was just like tired of all of that. So I, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And that, so the other thing I want to talk about is my family, because my father, who was an accountant, he would he would paint nudes inside book covers. Um, and he 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 saw himself. He wanted to be an artist. So he, you know, that blank white page in the books. There's nudes. There were these books, and there's nude paintings that my father did. And then my brother was in the basement and he took one wall and he painted it completely black and put an eye right in the middle. And so what I do is I, I, I took bowling balls and covered them in sea glass. <laughs> so somehow it all fits <laughs> <laughs> about being an artist. And, you know, like I had to do it. I had to do it. I had, I had like 14 bowling balls before they, you know, I couldn't, my house was, you know, too many bowling balls, but anyway, Steve got a bowling ball for me, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Great stuff. So, yeah. So am I out of time? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Because uh, I wanted to throw it up into a discussion, but great, uh, great things. And of course, I'm sitting here having done many years as an amateur actor compared to uh, not quite in the same class as Richard and Steve, but uh, having a great time. Mm -hmm. I was also thinking of... Uh, you know, the fear most people have of all of a sudden being out in public uh, and being naked. Uh, of course, my great fear was being uh, coming out on stage and forgetting my lines. That was the big thing that for for an actor. And, uh, yeah, it's the thing, man. And of course, uh, of course, war, which we're going through right now. And uh, I hope to uh, maybe ask you guys back for maybe some comments on that one time in the future, because... Those are things that uh, happen and stay with us, just like Slaughterhouse Five. The main character in Slaughterhouse Five uh, was going back and forth, in and out of that war continually, uh, and that's the way it is with people. Those are things that you don't forget that keep 
intruding upon your life. So um, one of the things that what is important to us uh, is, again, helping us not only find direction, but helping us find focus. And uh, we don't want to be focusing all the time in our life on things that we don't want to do. And I appreciate Richard uh, telling us <laughs> that uh, you pursued things that you wanted to do. And that is really, really important. Okay, let me throw it open to you guys and uh, open for any additional comments, any elaborations, comments on what the other uh, guys said, uh, and who's ready to start? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking uh, along this subject, obviously, a lot of things come up when you think about what's important to me and let it float. Well, uh, I, all of a sudden, it just popped in my head. You know, I was like... Um, I have uh, had a relationship with my children longer as them with uh, as adults than I had when they as as them being my kids. You know, my kids were um, seemed like that would be always be my kids. Well, they are, but now they're fifty and forty, and uh, they have lives of their own, and it's like uh, adjusting over time to um to that adult relationship so uh that uh, that's uh relationships change life changes time changes things um and it's uh you're really important i've been discovering to stay curious and to uh, be in a position where i can be creative and helpful because uh, I, I need to feel like um, I'm contributing, even though I'm not working, which is fine. That's exactly what I don't want to do. <laughs> of, yeah, but I am volunteering, and um, I'm uh, creating art, and uh, I'm uh, doing uh, uh, things in the community that. Um, that I feel are important, which reflects what's important to me. Yeah. And maintaining my uh, relationship with my wife and friends and, and then learning to create new ones. It's not easy making um, men, male friends uh, later on in life because everybody is in their, uh, stuck in their patterns. And then it's hard to uh, make adjustments for some people including myself. And I'm going to stop there. Yeah. Well, thank I you. want to yeah, jump ahead. in and thank you, Richard, for uh, the first thing you said, learning your lines, <laughs> right? Because you know what a panic I was in before, <laughs> all during the rehearsal process of our play. Uh, it, it felt like um, some kind of a death was <laughs> And um, so I'm tr also trying to relate the, the, what that thrill is of being on stage to the other things like the, the feeling connected to other people. And it's true that the feeling that I get when I'm on stage and it's good, like I know my lines, <laughs> uh, is a feeling of being very connected, not only to other people, but maybe primarily to myself. It's like this, this, you know, make me one with everything kind of thing. I'm like so in the moment, focused, yeah. feeling yeah. Uh, not worried, you know, feeling like a, a whole person, like sufficient, like in almost the rest of my life. And sometimes I feel like that in therapy sessions, because and I think that's why I like being a therapist is because I have that, when it's good, I have this intense feeling of connection, uh, almost like the rest of the world fades away, but at the same time feeling connected to, I'm in the right place at the right time. And I worry about that a lot, like outside of that sphere, like, am I doing enough for my kids, <clears throat> for my community? You know, now there's the disaster. Am I doing enough in that realm? Uh, Am I doing enough for my kids, even though they're adults? Um, I'm still their father, and uh, and and in my friendships too. 
am I doing enough? And like you, Bob, I, I struggle with that is um, maintaining one-to-one -one friendships with other men, which uh, I'm pretty lousy at too. <laughs> Well, I, I would certainly not agree with that because uh, Steve heads up a men's group, and uh, yeah. which has been going for 12 years, and uh, he has made a big difference in a lot of men's lives by bringing them together and uh, getting them to talk about important things uh, rather than just, uh, you know, <clears throat> what kind of beer we're going to drink tonight or what kind of sports we're going to watch uh, on the television, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Thank yeah, you. but I mean, I made that group be, uh, because I was thinking, oh, that'll fix it. No, it only fixes it every other week on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the rest well, of the great. time, is, I'm still struggling. <laughs> we all still struggle. That's that's why it's important to keep asking ourselves what's important and to keep on track. Uh, because I don't know about you guys, but I tend to procrastinate. So, uh, uh. And I, I certainly would uh, second uh, what Richard is saying about, and Steve, about the performance. Uh, we all have peak experiences in our life where we feel connected. And some of my, well, one of my big peak experiences was opening a show, uh, not only a show, but opening a new theater back in the 60s and going on stage, uh, not being able to see or know or talk to anybody because the lights were in my eyes and I couldn't see theirs, but I felt that connection. Um, and that's what all relationships do if we're really there in the moment, moment with ourselves so we can be true to ourselves, but also to share truly with other people. Um, and Steve was asking us at the beginning of the show, he says, uh, well, what would you take with you if the, everything's burning up? Like, uh, you know, of course, relating to the Maui wildfires, which I'll mention at the end of the show. But uh, one of the things that I'm doing as an old person is finding ways to get rid of stuff. And I'm organizing stuff. And one of the key things I'm organizing is my pictures, my pictures of my life and my friends and my people. And believe me, if there's a fire in my house, that's going to be one of the first things that I grab is a picture of the people that are important to me. Richard, thoughts? Uh, back to you. Well, you know, I'd probably save my Elvis costume if it came down to <laughs> the end of that. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I must tell you guys that I feel like this, this year I've been in this kind of uh, river of grief, uh, lots of deaths, and just, you know, so I look for this, I, I look for this kind of brightness that, that's why I relate to the theater, because it's, it's it's taught me a lot about understanding life and so it's it's almost spiritual to me what what you can go to the theater for and what people write about and so that's why i've sort of seized on it as a way to to understand myself and to you know like you you know you you give your attention to something you think is valuable and and i think that's what steve and i did you know we just we we decided this was important to us and so it was a beautiful thing. So I was, you know, really happy that we got to do that. You know? That's terrific. Uh, guys, we're running, uh, you know, it's getting close to closing time. How about some uh, final thoughts uh, from each of you? Uh, last minute things that maybe you can leave uh, with the audience who are also finding it difficult to tackle these big questions and to, uh, to find our way into, like the title of my show says, during real hard times. And uh, so final thoughts, final ideas, final points. Try something different because um, I went to a, a class uh, to, as a, at the Honolulu Museum of Art. And uh, that was like 10 years ago. And now I've been painting for all that time and creating. And uh, it made a big difference. I was scared stiff to go. Wow. I was going to look bad. Way to go. Way to go. Um, you know, Sartre said, uh, I think it was hell is other people. Um, but truthfully, I, I found that I really do. I really do like people. I appreciate them. I appreciate my neighbors. I like the fact that I have contact with them and that you really can 
offer yourself to them and, you know, be of assistance. And it, there's something really beautiful about that. You know, you can kind of get, it brings into focus what, what's important is, is really helping other people. So. Well, my two cents, I guess, would be sort of an advice to myself and anybody else that wants to do it is if there's something that you've been procrastinating because you're a little afraid it won't go well, that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things like that in my life. And I'm giving myself right here a little on-screen recorded pep talk. Let's go for <laughs> it, Steve. <laughs> you got nothing to lose. Remind me about that next time we're together. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> you, you can ask me I need that same uh, thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, some of the best things in my life, like my wife, happened because of I dared to do something that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> you know, and, I, and because the last three years we've been in that, you know, really locked down from, from the coronavirus, and it's been hard for a lot of people to get back together to reach out to other people to try new things like Bob is saying uh, and to be helpful, you know, like you all are saying uh, with other people. So now's the time for us to do that. And, uh, and I hope that uh, for those of you watching the show that uh, it's also encouraged you to sort of step out and reach out and maybe help some person uh, be in the moment, do some things that you haven't been doing uh, and been procrastinating on. Uh, and maybe watching a little less news on television or things that uh, make you unhappy and uh, looking to follow your bliss, like I think uh, the people on my panel uh, are doing and have done. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, thank you for doing uh, this, Ken. Thanks, especially Ken. thanks to Richard, who's coming all the way to us from the mainland. And that's always a great thing. And coming to me from uh, my hometown, I was born in Hollywood and raised in the San Fernando Valley. So uh, I have a special affinity for that. But thanks to all of you who are listening into the show. And thanks to the people at Think Tech Hawaii, Michael and Jay and Haley and Carol and all the people who make this possible. I uh, hope you join us in two weeks. Uh, for the next two shows, and our, my show is always usually on a Wednesday at uh, two o'clock, or excuse me, we tape on Wednesday at two, and we'll show it to everybody on Thursday at two o'clock. Uh, we're going to be concentrating on uh, what Steve brought out at the beginning of the show, and that is the Maui fires that are going on and the tragedy that's unfolding uh, with us uh, in the islands and for people all around, because everybody can relate. There's been so much disasters worldwide from climate change in various ways, not only wildfires, but floods and, and you name it. Uh, so we hope that you'll uh, join us then. And thanks to everybody and everybody have a good day. Aloha. <laughs>